today I'm talking about one specific app, Minery Caterpillar AR. And I'm going to kind of walk you through a little bit of the creative process. Um, it's very much a sort of warts and all kind of talk where I'll be more talking about the problems we've had developing it than, than the sort of joyous moments. Um, uh, and I guess one of the one of the important things to mention is it was I think about it was about a six week delivery cycle from, from when we first started working on it to when we uploaded it to the store. So it was all a little bit hurried. Uh, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. So first off, quick intro clip just to uh, set some context and show you the app in case uh, some of you haven't seen it. What I do with children is part of entertainment. Part teaching them a little bit. Part letting them into my world. Millions of children all over the world love caring for their very own, very hungry caterpillars. And now he's out in the wild. With my very hungry caterpillar augmented reality experience. Feed him tasty fruits. Play with him together. Watch him grow. Explore your world. And there's lots of surprises to discover. Learn about nature. And when he's tired, let him get some rest. When he spreads his wings, another adventure begins. For you and your very own, very hungry caterpillar. The hardest things about making this up was finding a day in Dublin when the sky was blue. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, just I, I probably here last year and in uh, in, in Bologna certainly uh, this year. I've, I've always said that AR is a really nice technical solution to a problem that just doesn't exist. Uh, I'm a complete AR skeptic. Uh, I I found that. Like I, I first made an AR product uh, almost 10 years ago, and um, I just found that all you're doing is turning your audience into a Venn diagram of the people who have your trigger cards, your physical objects, and, and your app, and the device. And it just, it's, I couldn't find anything in AR that you couldn't just do just as well in an app from a learning perspective. So I really, not a fan. Um, so what changed? Uh, well, firstly and, and most importantly, um, the, the trigger for us was Apple introducing ARKit. Um, uh, Warren, you said earlier that um, Jesse was saying 30 days work turned into one day's work. I think that's, that's pretty fair. Um, I, I have no interest in making AR content and making all of the technical back end for it, whereas the Apple solution is, is more or less works out of the box. It certainly does at this stage, even if it didn't when we started developing. Um, also, this guy, this is uh, Julian, um, one of our software engineers, was a little bit AR obsessed. So um, I kept, after AR was announced, um, I kept saying, no, I don't think we should do an AR product. Um, but one of the tech guys in his a little bit of downtime after uh, working on our MIFI app. Um, put together a simple demo and that kind of got me over the line on it being something worth doing. But most importantly, uh, actually, this was what really made me think, no, there might be a product there when we started getting kids to test it. Just the, while it's only, while, while, yeah, there's nothing in there that you could just do with an iPad, but the, the delight and engagement when, when we started putting it in kids' hands, they, they, it was in, because it was in their world, they just had a much, much more sense of involvement, control, and engagement. Did you move to the butterfly? No, it's the caterpillar. So I, I love that, correcting his dad, are you giving food to the butterfly? No, the caterpillar. Yeah. Bubbles must pop. Yep, and they do. Um, so, when it came to designing it, I mean, we already had the uh, My Very Hungry Caterpillar app, so that kind of, we sort of thought, okay, it's going to be pretty simple to put this uh, in, an, in an AR context. Um, uh, anybody who's seen any of my talks before knows pretty much all apps start with 
an 83 sheet of paper uh, where I start to sketch things out. And, um, but in this, usually uh, I'm writing down solutions. In this, it's all questions, objects. Do they reconfigure to the available space? Do balls fall off the edge of the table? Can focus cause action? In other words, if you look at the egg, can you hatch it that way? Because, I mean, I think, uh, Warren, even when you were demonstrating the um, uh, Thomas the Tank Engine app, what, what kid is going to hold an iPad and be able to tap things at the same time? So for me, it was really important that the app could, uh, could actually work without touch, that just by focusing on things, you could move around and work with that. Um, so there was loads of questions at the start, and you know, we kind of, I was getting the artists to sort of refine the designs a little bit. Um, um, and then we tend to, because we're, because we're working with uh, Eric and his team, we tend to storyboard things out in a fairly traditional way, um, just to kind of explain to them where we'll be going um, in, in the process of the app. Again, unlike my very own calculator, we have to consider things like, um, with a phone, and anyone's going to just use it in portrait mode, um, um, you know, as opposed to, you can default to landscape and you can control the camera uh, in, in a regular app. Um, and, and more importantly, at each stage along the way, we were prototyping and trying things out and putting it in the hands of kids and just seeing what worked, seeing what didn't. So, so although it was, although the storyboard had been planned out and all of those kind of things, uh, a lot of it, you know, you just make your decisions on the fly based on user reaction. Um, and then, you know, there's, there's kind of other things in there too. Like, with my very hungry caterpillar, um, uh, it was critical to me that there was no instruction, um, that it was just a slow onboarding experience that a, a child could kind of pick up and just, just know what to do, um, and that there'd be no wrong answers in there. Um, and I tried to do the same thing with this. I tried to make it so that it just it was just a gentle onboarding with very little instruction. And but we kind of still felt okay. Well, we we we've, we've got to if if it's not working for somebody, we've got to at least have some instructional information in there somewhere um, to to help the user get an optimal experience. Um, so when it came to building it, um, it's a Unity-based app. Now this is the original MyVerse Unity Calculator. Screen capture of it in Unity, and you can see it's one big long linear um, space, and all our all our assets and items are just organized in sort of discrete spaces that the user walks between. Um, so you can see it's it's really a, it's a long linear experience, and you know beyond what's viewable on the screen, there there is nothing. Um, uh, we use all sorts of like uh, little cheats, like you can see we're using these kind of white areas here to hide things, uh, just to kind of hide the seams, make it seem um, make it seem like a more believable experience. Um, but you know, you look at it from behind, and it's, it's even more of a mess. It just it's not an attractive it's it's not attractive in this context. It's only attractive through us showing the user very very controlled views uh, at any given time. The, the difference with something like an AR experience is that actually the user is entirely in control of the camera. So you're not able to just, you're, you're not able to detect these shots. So you have to make sure that all of the artwork is high enough resolution, that everything is organized in such a way that if a kid wants to look at it from the front and then decides to walk around behind it, it, it still has to hold up and look okay. Um, so that that was that was one of the kind of big uh, big challenges for us when it came to building it. Um, but the biggest challenge really were uh, bugs. Um, I think this clip is is pretty much the perfect metaphor for uh, for our process. And so in this instance, the dog laying down track in front of the train is Apple and Unity. Um, and, and we are the penguin uh, trying to uh, trying to trying to make the product. Um, it was it was absolutely insane because you, you have all of these different tech companies making things uh, while you are trying to also develop on them. So we found uh, you can't so much see it here, but this caterpillar is sort of hovering a couple of inches off the ground. We found keeping him on the ground to be one of the hardest things. Uh, 
So um, you can see there he is again, walking across the range, flying through some fruit, <laughs> flying dive bombing fruit. Uh, sometimes it was like a Madrid painting, you just have fruit everywhere on all planes. Uh, uh, sometimes it was like an Escher picture where the caterpillar would just suddenly start crawling up into the sky to eat fruit that was generated there. It was pretty challenging. Uh, sometimes things would sink into the ground. Um, we had a lot of collision detection issues as well. You can see there's a lady book jammed into a log there. Or a caterpillar directing through a log. It was, it was pretty hard. I mean, that, that kind of, you know, working with beta technology is always, is always going to be a challenge, but in this it was really uh, much more so than usual. I, I love this one. We had this bug in it, and we took us a couple of days to, to find where he would be, as he ate, he was only scaling. So as he eats through uh, the days of the week, uh, the caterpillar obviously gets fatter and fatter, and only the bottom half of them is getting fatter. I hated when that happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, was, I was waiting to see who was going to bite. And anyway, right. Good job, in, Mark. In this version here, where he's asleep on the log, you'll notice he has two faces. Yeah. One his, uh, one his uh, conjoined twin face, um, which again <laughs> stayed around for... It, it's actually, if you look at that trailer carefully at the start, that actually has most of these bugs in it. Um, it was really, really tricky <clears> just to kind of um, keep keep ahead of where Apple's development was at. And with a lot of the AR demos, and a lot of the AR products that are out there, um, what, they, what they do is they scan a surface and detect a plane, and once the plane is detected, they shut off all tracking data. Um, and that means that there's no sort of movement, there's no shake if somebody um, uh, is moving the camera too quickly, the objects still stay really, really well grounded. But we felt we couldn't do that because we wanted the kid to be able to hatch a caterpillar, say, on the floor here, and you know, be able to walk to the far end of the room and take the caterpillar with them. Um, to do that, we have to continuously track and evaluate the plane, detect any uh, objects that you potentially collide with, and um, it's, it's a much more complicated thing to do, but so, and, and that's, that's what led to a lot of the, um, I guess, incorrect ground plane detection and objects floating around the place because we really wanted to make sure it was a, as authentic as possible in an AR experience and that it was at least as good as Apple's tech. Oh, yeah, sometimes everything just freezes. So, this is a butterfly frozen in time. Really? It is pretty. But of course, we had our um, hardworking dev team uh, fixing those bugs. Here they are in a hotel room in San Francisco, uh, supposed to be off doing something completely different, and we would just be sending them through lists of bugs. And uh, even in their hotel room, they just stay there fixing them, sending sending bills back across the QA. Uh, we were fortunate enough to get a lot of uh, pre-launch press. Um, uh, at one point, if you popped Apple AR kit into, uh, into Google News, the Caterpillar was the first thing that came up. And, you know, that's, that's the independent uh, Forbes, Wired, uh, CNN, I think, uh, Rolling Stone magazine. So, you know, um, I think uh, Barry, a long time ago, would have given up his hopes and dreams of getting quoted in Rolling Stone magazine. But uh, there, there he is. You know, it was it was absolutely fantastic. It resulted in a lot of um, a lot of awareness, a lot of knowledge um, about the product in advance. The reality of it is, though, that all of the all the PR in the world doesn't really count for much if a user can't actually click and buy something at that time. So, although we got phenomenal press because there was no, because somebody couldn't actually pick up the product at the time, it didn't necessarily result in. Uh, uh, quite the sales you would expect or like. TechCrunch, Verge, CNN. CNN. So, uh, one of the really fun parts of this project was working with Eric Carl. Um, and uh, this is me showing Eric the, the, the Caterpillar um, app for the first time. And he did, every single child in user testing does this. They, they first look at the app, they first look at the app, they see the content appear, 
And then they look on the other side. And I was delighted when Eric did exactly that. And he just he looked at me, and then he looked behind me. And he said to me, is this thing real somewhere? You know? <laughs> I, I think he thought it was maybe a little robot or something along those lines, but his, his delight, as you can see on, on, on his face there, was just uh, amazing and uh, really, really nice to, uh, to see him so, so happy with it. Um, and we spent a lot of time with him uh, up at his museum and, and in his studio as well, and like, we were talking him through our, our creative process and uh, how the art came to be. And, and um, what, we what we were working from, all of those sort of things. And then he uh, also took us through his creative process and all of his um, textures and patterns that he creates. Um, and it, it, it was nice because in his studio he also talked about his early work. Um, he was originally a graphic designer. And uh, in, in uh, post-World War uh, Germany he was, he was involved in making all of these um, very abstract posters, and um, because under the Nazi regime there was uh, any, anything that was abstract art, anything anything like that was considered just it was banned. So um, he, he was amazing, just talking through his um, his early work development and, uh, and and his inspirations. And this is a this is the suitcase that Eric arrived in New York. Um, to join Adland uh, in, the, in, the, in the 50s, um, it's, and it had all his worldly possessions and still has them there. So it was really quite remarkable working with him. And Apple um, uh, interviewed Eric, and they they actually they did a lovely, lovely piece. And yesterday I was talking about iOS 11 and the new editorialized app store. It can result in really, really lovely articles like this, where um, they basically talked about his life history, uh, talked about his process, talked about all of these things. And their, their um, angle was that, you know, he's always been a pioneer. Like he, whether it was with the original Caterpillar book where he put holes in the page and, and die cut pages, um, or his later books where he integrated sound or integrated light into them. He's always been kind of actually at the forefront of technology despite using a very uh, basic collage technique. Um, and you know they 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 were really they really feel that the work that we do now is an extension of, of Eric's um, early experimentation. So I always say you know there's a lot more than making the app. You've got to um, you've got to you've got to do so many mat uh, promotional materials um, uh, in terms of screen grabs, in terms of videos, in terms of all of those sort of things. And what we found was, through through using an through using an AR app, um, it was suddenly it was more like you were dealing with a child performer or something like that because you'd be trying to get that perfect screen capture, but the camera would never do what you wanted them to do um, uh, to to be in the shot. So you'd have to make these elaborate setups, and as I said, wait for a non-gray day in Ireland, which just wasn't happening. And, and then just go and screen grab. Um, but we had to take hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shots just to get the usable imagery that we wanted. Uh, and then we had to do the same thing for phone. And then we had to do the same thing in uh, about 30 different languages. It's, um, there's, there's, a, there's, I guess, more of a complexity to making your marketing shots or anything like that in this than, than you would find uh, in a regular app. We have to make these, you know, elaborate backdrops and sets that um, that we could run the app against. It's not screen carpet. Yeah. It is very different from the previous one. You have um, really just four to six stories that they're pushing at the at the top of the page. Um, 
and, and then you have your, your icons underneath. But it's it's definitely um, as a developer, there's 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 kind of less real estate than there used to be for uh, for main stage promotion. Um, so it was it was definitely an interesting one for us to see. Well, how how would this perform? Um, I think with any app development, iteration is important, but particularly when you make an app in six weeks, uh, it's really, really important to iterate afterwards. Um, and, you know, we found there were, there were things originally, like our, our original onboarding involved following a butterfly flying around the room, and, and that was how we were doing plane detection. Um, but we kind of, we sort of felt that actually showing the butterfly right at the start was, was sort of spoiling it, so we wound up swapping that out something a little bit more abstract. Um, when it came out, these are all of our one-star reviews. My screen is black, my screen is black. Uh, don't buy, camera seems to be broken, very dark. Uh, how do I get my money back? Um, you know, these are not the kind of reviews you want to see. Um, I, I do read every review for every one of our products every day, um, uh, which can be a uh, pretty tough experience sometimes, and sometimes pretty good, but we had, we had really tried, as I said, to, to make it a simple experience with very lightweight onboarding, um, and what I hadn't taken into account was, for many people, this is their first experience with an augmented reality app, so we were getting negative reviews, um, you know, because people didn't realize they had to accept the camera permissions. Um, we were getting negative reviews, um, because um, really because of a because of things that were effectively flaws in AR kit um, rather than actually in the app. So people were giving you people were expressing their disappointment with the augmented reality experience rather than necessarily with the app. Um, so what we did was we, we we made a point release that has very explicit onboarding, and you know it, it, it broke my heart to do it. Um, because, as I said, I wanted a, a seamless, integrated, smooth experience for the child at first. But there's no two ways about it. it it's, a, it's a complex thing to do. And if somebody hasn't used AR before, you, you need to onboard them properly. So, one of the number one things we found was people were covering the camera with their finger. So, point that out. Let them know it needed to be a bright, well, well lit space, a flat space. Um, you know, just some very basic instructions. But then also, um, we put in detection to see, well, are they, are they getting enough light? You know, do we need, so, so we still need alerts so that if somebody was in too dark an area, um, it would tell them. So once we did all of that, um, we found the reviews went way up. And it's, it's now about, you know, 4.5, which is up from 1.5. Uh, <laughs> And we're continuing, continuously developing new content. Um, this is some content for an upcoming seasonal update. But we've also we've included new areas and new characters. Uh, kind of put in a little bit of a hide and seek game, um, where he, when, as you, as you tap on things around the place, um, you know maybe a frog will jump out or a firefly, and then he'll go and hide behind something else. Um, so. Uh, I, I, I always find the most useful presentations at Duster Magic are ones where you know developers give you actual concrete information on how an app has performed. Um, so this this is basically um, the revenue against the app, um, and you can see when it when it launched, we got some nice big spikes during featuring. Uh, when it dropped out of featuring, it kind of shrunk down and. Then I think that one, the, the later spike, is when they ran the story on Eric. Um, but, but this whole graph uh, for, let's see, I guess about six weeks, six weeks of revenue um, is about fifty to sixty thousand dollars, which you know is not a huge amount, um, particularly given the the level of featuring that it had. Um, so. We'll keep at it. I, I think that the um, I think that there's still at this point there were still very few people had actually switched over to iOS 11. So I think you know I think we'll see it's it's one that steadily improves over time. But um, but it's not been uh, knocking out of the 
park success by Nancy. Um, and that's it. Any questions?